Hey everyone, it's Rhea here, and in this video, I want to talk about how do you start preparing for Usico with no programming experience? Just preparing from scratch, where do we even begin? And so, let's get into it. So, I'm just going to assume you've never coded before, you don't even know what a program is. The first thing we have to do is we have to get familiar with some sort of coding. And so, if the goal is to train for Usico, then the best language to start using is C++. Now, that being said, if say you're gonna take APCSA um, and you were like, okay, well, I only kinda wanna make gold or platinum because those can be done with Java and APCSA is also Java. C++ is really used if you're trying to make IOI. Um, and Usical Camp is heavily biased towards C++ too, just in terms of there's some problems in Usical Camp which are C++ only. So C++ is the better option, but if you're also preparing for APCSA, some people prefer to learn Java. So if, if you prefer to learn Java, hey, go for it. Um, in my experience, once I learned C++, taking APCSA and just learning Java wasn't really that difficult a task. So you don't have to, but hey, up to you. Okay, so we learned C++ for Dala, but how do we learn C++ for Java? We have no programming experience. Like, where do we even start? Well, ideally, you want to start with an online tutorial. Now, there's a lot of free online tutorials that will teach you how to do it. If you want to be more handheld and have someone walk you through the process and show you how to code, you can easily hire a tutor. Um, some tutors are actually pretty cheap if you find the right place. Like if you're trying to looking for a virtual tutor, I've seen them go as low as 20 bucks an hour. However, I don't want to know the quality of those. So if you're, I would say, I'd say look for reviews online. Look for reviews, find a really good tutor. How do we learn C++ or Java though? We're resuming that we're starting with zero programming experience. And so the first thing you have to do is write something called a hello world program. And what that is, is it's just a program that prints hello world. Now the reason I use this syntax right here is if you copy paste this into Python 2, this will literally just print hello world. Um, but you can also think of it as write hello world or I'll put it, just write a simple basic program to get you started. Now this will actually be a lot more complicated. Than you think it will just starting because there's several things ha have to be done before you're able to write this program right? Before you're able to write this program, first of all, you have to install a compiler, then you have to install an editor, and then you have to get your compiler and editor working together. Now, this sometimes is a little bit tricky, and it requires a lot of searching online, looking at Stack Overflow and stuff. So these things can take a little bit of time to get it working. So I'm going to write this down as get a system to run your code. And the reason I say a system instead of specifying what system it should be is because there's a lot of Usico finalists which have a variety of different systems. And for those of you who don't know, Usico finalists are top 25 Usico students. So I've seen some people use command line. I've seen some people just hit play on the code editor. I've seen people use different editors. So really there's some freedom what you want to do here. But these three things is how to get started, right? And if you run into problems with this, which you probably will, search up the problem that you're running into on Google and then click on some links and start to figure it out. And don't get discouraged by that because that's going to be like the first step in setting this up. Now, if you have a parent or a friend or someone who is familiar with coding, they will probably be able to help you set this up a lot faster. And so you should definitely utilize them. If you're working with a tutor or someone, you should definitely get them to help you set these things up because this is something that you have to do, but you only have to do it once. So learning how to get good at this is a complete waste of your time because you only have to do it once. And then the program has to print hello world. So then we have to write a program. How do we learn to write a program? Well, you can Google it. Um, you can probably Google this, but what I recommend you do is honestly just take some sort of course. There's a bunch of free courses online. They're also paid courses. So whatever you're looking at, there's probably an option for it. But I'll say if you're just starting out, why not start out with a free program, right? Because getting started with coding is a very difficult thing to do on your own. Like learning syntax. Syntax is the language code uses. It's not a trivial thing to do. So I would definitely say it's good to learn it in a some sort of systematized way. And an online course can do that. If you have a parent that can help you, that can do that. If you have a coach that can help you, that can do that. It's probably good to figure out some sort of system. And I'm going to give you a basic system here, but I can't really look at all of your codes and help you debug what the problem is to getting your code to write Hello World and all the future codes we're going to go over. So this is just like a starting point, um, but be sure to just find that person to help you. You can learn to code by yourself, and I've seen people do it. It just, it takes a lot longer. 
and it's it's extremely difficult to learn to do it by yourself. So learning to code is something that, you know, having a parent or mentor to guide you would really be helpful for. Okay, the next thing is you want a program to print something. Now let's get it to do something else, right? So printing is an outputting task. Next thing, let's get a program to get some input. Let's say we ask a user for a number and print twice that number. So say we ask a user for a number, let's call the number X, and then we want to print 2X. So this will take, you know, a little more progression to get here, right? This, this is not going to be the second program that you write. So this will be the first program that you write. The second program that you write will not be this, just because this is a significantly more complicated from this. So you have to learn several things to get here, right? To get here, you're going to have to learn variables, and there's going to be a bunch of different types of variables. So we're going to have ints, uh, strings, longs. But you don't really have to learn longs at this point. It's also going to be like doubles. Uh, we learn how to do math. Uh, then we need to learn how to take input. And with these three things, you should be able to write this code. Now, you might be wondering, how do we learn all these things? Like, what's the progression going to be in a step-by-step -step fashion? That's, again, why you want to learn it in a systemized fashion. If you have a parent who can help you, a course, a mentor, that would be super useful here. But these are sort of the things that you should learn. So even if you just have like a tutor who doesn't really have a curriculum, you can hand them this video and say, hey, these are the sort of stuff I want to learn in order. I want to learn this, then this, then this, and they will be able to help you learn all these things in that order. Okay, so the next thing we have to learn are if statements, which are called conditionals. Okay, so now we need to write a program to ask the user for a number and print whether or not it is a multiple of two. And for this, you need to learn conditionals, which are if else statements and the next thing you need to learn is mods. Now, you probably would have learned modulos here, um, but if not, you need to learn what mod is. All right, cool. So now we got uh, if statements. The next thing we need to learn is loops. Now, there are two types of loops, for loops and while loops. Now, for loops, there are so many different things you can do with loops. It's kind of hard for me to give you a specific problem and say, if you can solve this problem, we probably have a good grasp of loops, but I, I still will give a problem. Print all the multiples of three, but not five between one and hundred. So if you can do this, you probably have a decently good grasp of loops. And to do this, you need to learn for loops. All right. Now, the next thing for while loops, it's a pretty standard program. The idea of this program is you take input a number x, and then if x is even, divided by 2. If x is odd, then replace it with 3x plus 1. Keep repeating this process until you end up with 1. And then the question is, how many times did you repeat this process? And I will specify it as output how many times you repeated this process. And in order to do this, we need to learn while loops. So once you do all of these things, right, you should have a pretty fundamental understanding of the different basics of, of coding. And you should have a pretty good understanding to get started with some competitive programming questions. So I want to reemphasize that the idea is not just to solve these problems. For each of these problems, you should be solving a bunch of similar problems, right? So for example, we say learn for loops. This is going to mean that you're going to solve a bunch of problems on for loops until you learn for loops. We say learn conditionals, you should be solving multiple problems on conditionals. Uh, learn how to take input, again, multiple problems on how to take input. If you learn all of these things, this should give you a basic understanding of how to start coding. And from here, you can then start attacking step two, which is going to be easy code forces problems. So if you go to code forces, you can actually filter and see the easiest problems. So here is codeforces.com. What you're going to do is click register and create an account. Um, I already have an account, so I'm not going to create one. Um, and then you click on problem set. And now what you can do here is filter the difficulty of the problems. So let's say I start by saying 800 or lower. Now this will give me a few of the easiest problems. And I can then click on the problem and start working on it here. So it'll give me the input that's needed, the output that's needed, and when I'm ready, I can select my language here and then choose a file and hit submit. I could also go up to submit and choose my language and just paste my code in here. 
So hopefully this gives you an idea of how to get started with code forces problems. The point of doing easy code forces problems is to get better and better at solving problems. So we're going to start with 800 difficulty. And as you get better and better at these, you want to be moving to harder and harder problems. So when you reach the point that you're able to solve most problems of this difficulty, then bump it up to 900, then to 1,000. And we're going to keep going until we reach 1,200 and we're able to solve 1,200 difficulty problems. Now, these are actually quite difficult problems. So anywhere between 1,000 and 1,200 is a reasonable place to be completed with step two here. And then step three is going to be start working on easy use to code problems. And so find some of the easiest use to code problems. And if you look at the contest results, you can see how many people solved the particular problem. And, and you can get an idea of which problem on that contest was the easy, medium, and hard one. Um, also, the older problems tend to be easier. So about 2017 is when the new bronze division started. Now, again, this is just if you're picking problems by yourself. If you have someone to, there to guide you, like a parent or a mentor or a coach, they should be looking through all the bronze problems and they should be picking out the easiest ones for you in a step-by-step -step fashion. So when we do all of these things, there's a few more things that we're going to be learning while we're going through this, right? In the middle, we're going to have to learn what an array is. We're going to have to learn nested loops. And that's just where we put one loop inside of another. Then we're going to have to learn what a 2D array is. And these three things you can learn as you're going through the problem. So when you reach a problem that has one of these things that you get stuck on, you can then learn it. Alternatively, you know, if you're having a coach or a mentor there to guide you, they should be the ones to be like, okay, this week we're going to learn arrays. And then they pick several problems from here based on, or from easy array problems to help you learn those. And they're like, all right, cool. Next week, we're going to learn nested loops. And they pick several problems to help you guide those. So their problems are still an increasing order of difficulty, but they target the different topics. Then you can move on to harder easy code problems. And what you will find that you need to learn for some of the harder problems is you need to learn how to sort stuff. And this should essentially take you through the entirety of the bronze curriculum. Now, one of the more, these are sort of how you get started. Um, one of the more intricate things that you then would have to do to do well on the contest is learn contest strategy. So whatever your original contest strategy is, you're going to have to work on that a lot because people's original contest strategy is normally never the best one, even for Usico campers. In fact, they give a lecture at UCL camp every year, which is for the top 25 coders in the nation on how to improve contest strategy. And people who implement that, they see their scores shoot up. So I have videos on contest strategy, which I will link to in the corner here and also down below. Now, one thing I want to caution you is make sure your code is not too long. I cannot emphasize this enough. One of the main problems I see people at this level doing or running into is that there'd be a code which can be written in 20 to 40 lines, but their code is 200 plus lines or 100 plus lines. And the problem with that is if your code is a lot longer, there's going to be a lot more bugs or mistakes in them. And it's going to take a lot of longer to figure out where the mistakes are. And you might be thinking, oh, I'm, I'm not going to have any mistakes. Trust me, everyone has mistakes when they write code. And what we have to do is manage the number of mistakes we run into. So at this level, you should make sure your code is at a pretty reasonable length for what it should be. So 20 to 40 lines is pretty reasonable for these sort of difficulty problems. Anything longer, you should be like, hold up, am I doing something wrong? Now, if your code is 200 plus lines, then the question is, how do we get our code back to true revision? And so one thing I will say here is the more time you spend before your coding, about figuring out what your code should look like, the less time it'll take you to write these long codes and debug them. So here's what I mean by that. I had a student who was running into this exact problem. Her codes were like 150 plus lines when they could be 20 to 40 lines. And it was taking her like an hour and a half plus to get through these, sometimes even four hours plus to get through these, right? And so we said, okay, I want you to, I told her, I want you to take 20 minutes before you start implementing to think about the structure of your code. Because the problem some, most people run into is when they're coding these long codes, when they're partway through coding, and they're like, oh shoot, I forgot about this thing. Or they realize something new and they're like, oh, I gotta go fix this. And they're going back and they're making changes or they're trying to account for it, and their code just becomes super long. And so if you have the structure of your code planned out before you start coding, your code will be exponentially shorter and exponentially more reasonable to do. Because when we come to these harder bronze problems here, you will not be able to do them if your shorter bronze problems are too long. If these easier problems are 200 plus lines, then how long are these long problems are going to be? They're going to be 300 plus lines, 500 plus lines. Like I've seen really long codes here. And so 
you cannot, cannot, cannot let these, these things get too long. Okay, so if you're good to go with these codes being short, you should also be good to go here. And then learn and improve your content strategy. And I'm not going to really go super into detail in this video. Just because this video is how to get started with coding and this is like all the way at the end of bronze. But I will link it in the description below and it should be in that corner. And the idea behind a contest strategy is that all the problems that you're able to solve out of contest, you want to be able to solve them in contest too. And that four hour time limit, it may seem like a lot of time, like it's four hours. It's a lot more than math competitions. And once you're familiar with math competitions, you would know that, oh, four hours sounds long. But it's really not, especially when you consider that these are pretty hard problems they're showing up, right? So again, if the problems are trivial for you, okay, then you're good to go and concentrate it doesn't matter. But if the problems are at your level or slightly below, which usually it'll be if you're taking that contest, it takes uh, taking the time to work on your contest strategy is pretty essential there too. So hopefully these five steps would help you get started with coding. You'll learn C++ or Java. Then easy code versus problems and easy to go problems, then hard to go problems, and then improve your content strategy. Go through these steps, get started with coding, and let me know how your use of code journey goes, because I love hearing those stories. Hope you have a great day, and I'll see you later. Bye.